Hello and welcome to the video where we're going to be looking at sculpting up a human head. Now you may be able to tell that I've gone and bought some new music which I think is maybe making things sound a little bit more exciting than they're actually going to be but nevertheless I'm going to try and live up to the promise of the music. I've covered sculpting faces in previous videos but I've only really mentioned in passing some of the uh, measurements and techniques you need to employ to make them look uh, real and realistic so I thought it would be useful to do a video that covers sculpting up a bust uh, and looking at all of the different measurements and things you need to take into account when you're sculpting up a human face. I think it's because we're so used to looking at human faces that it's very difficult to actually sculpt them accurately. I saw a documentary um, somewhere which was saying that large portions of our brain are dedicated to recognising faces. Uh, therefore it's very difficult for humans to sort of be able to look simply at the geometric shapes that make up a face without those parts of our brain sort of getting involved and trying to analyse who it is to see if we recognise it, all that sort of stuff. So um, it can be quite challenging but I found myself focused focusing on sculpting faces quite a lot. Um, this is one that I've done previously. Um, this is actually my first attempt at doing a likeness. Um, it's supposed to be Edward James Olmos as Commander Adama from the new series of Battlestar Galactica. It's not entirely there, I don't think. It looks quite like him from some angles, but from other angles not so much. So um, it is quite a challenging thing to actually sculpt up a face. Now I've previously concentrated on doing old guys. Um, the reason being is that their faces are often quite textured and um, there's often quite a lot of definition between the different sections of their face. So they often have quite um, clear uh, lines between their mouth and their cheeks for example, or very stark lines around their eyes. Here are a few more sculptures I've done in the past and um, this one's my old droid and um, I've had a few goes at doing this so there are two different versions here as you can see. There's like quite a lot of texture and um, detail to these faces because the skin's got lots of interesting folds in it. And I've often found that very fun to sculpt uh, because you can kind of go quite extreme with it depending on how old you want the sculpture to look. Here's another one I'm currently working on. Um, I'm not going to say who this is, but I'd be interested if anyone can actually recognise who this is supposed to be. So if you think you know who it is, uh, please do say in the comments. I will be featuring this one in a future video series actually, so once the sculpture's finished I'll start posting those. So I thought I'd challenge myself on this occasion by not sculpting up an old guy. Um, so instead what I'm going to do is try and sculpt a young woman. And I've often found that a little bit more challenging in that um, women tend to have smoother, more gentle, um, dare I say, elegant features. And that can be quite challenging to sculpt because you've got to have a very subtle uh, gradation between different sections of the face. So um, it can be quite difficult. So let's get started. As you can see here, I'm using Chavant uh, Le Beau Touche here, which I have covered in a previous video. Uh, this is quite a soft oil-based clay. Um, I find it really cool for sketching, and for some reason I think the terracotta colour just makes you look a little bit more serious as a sculptor. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because all of the really good sculptors, or the ones that I sort of, the ones that I perceive as being really professional, seem to use it. What I'm doing here is just wrapping some tin foil around a copper armature which I've made. Now you'd normally use tin foil to bulk out sculpey sculptures and you do it because when you cook the sculpey um, there's a tendency for it to crack if you have it being too thick. So you bulk out the interior with tin foil so the layer of clay you have isn't too thick. Um, we're not going to be cooking this of course because uh, it's an oil clay, it won't harden in the oven, in fact it will melt. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm not entirely sure I've got quite enough clay to actually make a complete head so I'm just filling in the interior with foil just so I can make sure I've actually got enough clay to be getting on with. As you can see I'm also wrapping wire around the tin foil here, this is just to give some additional texture to the piece so that the clay can grip onto it more easily. So the first step here is really just to bulk out a very very basic shape of the head here. So I'm just whacking it on uh, in sort of large lumps and just trying to get a very basic shape. As you can see I'm wearing uh, gloves here and that's because it's oil clay. Um, it will leave an oily residue on your hands. I mean you might be perfectly fine with that when you're, um, when you're using it but I find that it can really um, start covering your hands in a sort of an oily film. So I'm now beginning to add shapes here and what I'm doing is trying to get just a very very basic sort of face shape. So I don't know if you can see here I've got a little blob here for the chin and I've sort of started adding a little um, sort of uh, bump here which is eventually going to be the eyebrow. What I'm trying to do is get a curve to the front of the face in profile so you can imagine the face uh, bulging out where the nose and the cheeks will go. 
So this stage is just very, very basic shapes, trying to build it up slowly and trying to get the basic form correct before I start going in and adding detail. So if you look at the profile of a face here and I draw some lines that rest on the top and the bottom of the face, you can see that there's a specific angle between those two lines. Now this is something that I look for when I'm putting the initial shapes of a sculpture together. So what I'm doing here now is just going ahead and putting in some more blobs of clay, trying to get that angle into the sculpture. So looking at things now, I've got the eye in the centre of the head, so it should be halfway between the top and the bottom of the head. Um, I think maybe I need to add a little bit more on the uh, forehead there as well, but I think I've got the angle that I was looking for, so I'm going to add a little bit more to the forehead and also build out the back of the head there as well. As I mentioned, the eye should be exactly um, in the centre of the head uh, between the top and the bottom. So if we measure the distance from the eyes to the chin here on this reference photo and then take the same distance from the eyes to the top of the head, you can see there's exactly the same distance between them. You should also find that the centre of the eyes more or less line up with the corners of the mouth. So as you can see here, I've now bulked up the forehead and the uh, top of the head as well. So now the eye line of the sculpture is directly in the centre between the top and the bottom. Now that I'm happy with the basic proportions of this, I'm now going forward to fill in the gaps here and start smoothing it out slightly. Um, one thing I have done here is to add some thin shapes here to the cheekbones. Looking at the reference photo here, you can see where the cheekbone sort of comes down from the side of the face towards the mouth. So I'm just trying to replicate that shape on the sculpture. So what I'm trying to do here is sculpt the underlying shape of the skull beneath the skin here and as you can see there's a curve around the cheek and also around the edge of the mouth there as well. It's just to give a bit of a structural um, detail to the sculpture. So now at this stage I think it's probably about time we start adding some eyes in and uh, if you're anything like me I'm sure you've got a box full of eyes as well. We've got various types here, these are I think oxen and cat eyes, um, they're a little bit big for this one of course. Uh, also got some ball bearings which are quite useful. Um, these are, I think they're two-thirds scale human eyes and they're actually really really nice, they've got a lot of detail but really realistic. Um, unfortunately uh, as you can see they're a little bit too big for this sculpture but I might have to come back and do something in a larger scale so I can use them. I think in this case I'm just going to use some of these blank eyes that I've painted some black into in the back. This is only a sketch of course, we're not going for a colour, so I don't think it will matter too much. Okay, so I don't think they look too bad in terms of size. So what I'm going to do here is take this out and add a blob of clay just behind there, just to give it a seat and a sort of firm foundation. Positioning can be a bit of a problem with eyes. I often find myself repositioning them quite frequently. So I'm just checking here that it does line up with the corner of the mouth, which uh, it seems to. So I'm now moving on and doing some work on the nose. And it's tempting just to sort of whack the nose on, uh, on the front of the face and leave it at that. But it's actually surprising how much it blends into the cheeks. So what you can see here is I'm adding some shapes just at the corners of the eyes that come down to the cheeks. As with everything, sculpting noses just takes practice. Uh, same with ears and hands and all that sort of thing. It's quite an intricate shape when you actually get down to it. So obviously two blobs to either side and one on the front is um, the basics of the shape. But blending them together really does take some, um, some practice. Now moving on to sculpting the mouth as well. Um, I've said before in previous videos that I find that if you get the sort of basic forms of the face down early on, so the nose and the mouth, it really helps the um, sculpture read. I think it's because of the way your brain interprets faces. If you have the mouth looking correct, then it the, the face tends to look correct as well. If you had like a deformed mouth or something that's only partially sculpted, I think your brain sort of thinks that the it's looking at a deformed face.
I wish uh, mouths were easier to sculpt than they are, it's not just a straight line. So as you can see here, I am sculpting in some lips here. So you generally have a two points for the upper lip and then a, a rounded lower lip. Of course, this is only very rough at the minute. It will take a fair degree of further refinement to get this looking absolutely realistic. Adding things like indents around the corners of the mouth and between the upper lip and the cheeks can really help the mouth to look correct. I mentioned previously that it's helpful to divide the face up into two um, areas from the chin to the eyes and from the eyes to the top of the head. It's also useful to subdivide those divisions further. This can help with the placement of the nose and mouth. So here's an example of how you can easily get caught out. Although this face is looking okay from the front, when you look at it from above, you can see that it's slanted slightly to the right. In order to correct that, what I'm gonna do is simply scoop out the front of the face and reposition it. The fact that we're using soft clay actually makes that quite easy to do. So making progress it's still looking fairly basic and rough. I find that it's easy to concentrate on one side of the face so I can then get that detail right and then replicate it over to the other side of the face once I'm happy with it. One thing I have noticed here that while I've been concentrating on the face it looks like I need to add a little bit more onto the forehead. As you can see here, I've added some more clay to the forehead. I've also just put in some lumps for the, on the cheeks and on the nose. I've also come down to the neck and started adding in some tendons uh, and also on the throat as well. So I think that's looking quite good there now. I'm quite liking the proportions of the sculpture. It almost looks a little bit like an anatomical reference photo perhaps. I don't know, so I think some of the tool marks are reminding me of muscles or something like that. And it looks like I've got the angle I was looking for earlier in the video, so I'm happy about that. So I'm just going in now and adding in additional uh, blobs of clay here for the eyelids. For eyes, it's worth looking at some more reference photos just to sort of get the basic idea of the shape of the eye. I think for women, you tend to have a sort of an almond shape with a sharp corner on the inside. You can see that here in the reference photo. Having worked on the eyes for a little bit, one thing I've noticed here is that actually I think the eyes are a little bit too big for what I need. Um, so look away if you're squeamish, but I'm about to pop out the eye and replace it with a smaller version. Um, even though it's a sculpture, it does still look a little bit painful. This is something I find I do quite a lot, that um, you end up moving things about, just trying to get the right positioning here. And I think the eye is just a little bit too large. It's sort of giving the sculpture a little bit of a maybe a slightly cartoonish uh, look to it. When you do look at photos of real people, it's actually quite striking how small the eyes are in comparison to the rest of the head. And it can be quite deceiving, as I've mentioned before, when you look at a picture of a face, you don't really tend to notice those sort of small details. So it's looking slightly weird now that I've got one small eye and one large eye, but as I said earlier, I, I do tend to work on one side of the face and then transfer those details over the other side of the face once I'm happy with it. I think this is looking quite good at the minute. There's something about it that isn't quite looking realistic for me, and I often find with um, doing portrait sculptures that there's often a tiny little detail or something that isn't quite proportionally correct that stops it popping and making it look real. I'm not quite sure what it is for this sculpture just yet, but I find that if you just keep working on it, eventually you find out what it is. Having looked at it, I think it might be something to do with the 
cheeks. I think maybe I've got the cheeks a little bit too far back, perhaps. As you can see on the left side of the sculpture, I've added a few more blobs onto the cheek just to try and level things up a bit. So I'm going to continue adding a few blobs here and there to try and further bring out the uh, proportionality and just try to nail that down and hopefully it should start looking like an actual person. Also need to change out the other eye there as well, so I'm just getting that sorted. So as you can see, I'm just working on the left-hand side of the face now, just trying to match that to the right-hand side of the face. And I'm hoping that that's gonna help actually marry things up a little bit more. As you can see on the right side of the head here, I've also sculpted in a hint of the skull underneath. And this isn't something that you tend to see so much on actual people, unless they're really, really skinny or perhaps um, ill or something like that. But I do find it helps me to envisage where the skull is in relation to the face and just allows you to see how things should lay. Now I'm thinking about putting some ears in here, so I find that it's useful to have the edge of the cheekbones in the skull visible so I can see where I should position the ear. As with noses, doing ears is just a matter of practice really. Obviously they have the outer loop, which is the sort of uh, ear lobe, but the interior detail can be quite intricate, so it's worth just studying some reference photos again to see how the ear should look. I find that using a ball sculpting tool is quite useful, as that allows you to get some quite nice smooth edges, which is what you really need for an ear. Here I'm just sculpting in a little bit of definition on the cheek. I think they could do just a little bit of a hint of a cheekbone in there. Just using the flat edge of the tool there to smooth the clay down. I think that's looking quite good now. I can see, uh, I can see where the cheekbone is, but there's not too much of a sharp line, so that's good. So I'm now moving on just to level up the other side of the face and add um, additional refinements. Um, as I've said on many occasions, this is just a process of constant refinement, constant adding bits, slowly taking bits away. As you can see, I'm also doing the left hand eye there as well. And now I'm moving on to working on the ear. Um, as you can see, I'm using a variety of tools here, including a brush. I find that very useful for just getting very smooth um, contours inside the ear. Obviously, there's quite a lot of intricate detail. Um, as you can see here, I've also just repositioned the ear as well, simply by cutting the entire thing out, moving it around and then sticking it back on. Um, this is something that I find myself doing quite a lot. You position things and they look right, and you work on them for a bit, and then after a while you realise, actually, no, that's completely wrong. Don't be afraid just to chop the large sections out of your sculpture and reposition them. So after all that, this is what we've ended up with. As with anything, you can continuously keep refining and refining and refining here. Now obviously uh, she's missing some eyebrows and uh, doesn't have any hair, so I could go in and add those. But I think for the purposes of demonstrating anatomy and just how you lay out proportions of the face, I think this will do. I'm quite pleased with how it comes out. It does look like a person, I think, and it does look like a female, I think, which is also sometimes a little bit difficult to demonstrate if you don't include any hair. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, I'll be posting more videos on future projects. So please do uh, subscribe if you'd like to keep up with uh, what's going on. Uh, you can also find out more on my website, which is uh, www.thedarkpower.com or you can follow me on my Facebook page, just search for The Dark Power.